Welcome back. Okay, hey. so there's lots of interweb conversations. So it's not even anything recent. I just feel like it's anyway. I wanted to have a conversation on the channel about like author career trajectories mm. because I think that a lot of folks don't have a realistic career plan. And I know that people might not be happy that I said that, but it feels like a lot of writers, maybe more writers now, are are saying, I want to be a full-time writer. And I don't think that that's 100% realistic about how the market and the business works. Yeah, I think ultimately, agreed. I agree. And I think what we want to do here is help you set realistic expectations. And, and this is probably similar to what I have done with so many agents here at Bookends, especially those who are brand new to agenting, is we have a real conversation of what are your goals, what are your hopes and dreams, and what do you need to do to get there and what's realistic? Because, I mean, I think even you, when you first started full-time agenting, I really had to have a real like, okay, that's a great goal, but yeah, what we got to do and we need to really look at this realistically and even with other people I've had them really want to be like I just want to be careful about my list and I go do you want to make money and build a career they're at odds sometimes yes so I and I think this is what we want to do for authors we want to say we know you have hopes and dreams but let's be realistic about your expectations and the real work to get there yeah okay so that I'm glad you said that part the real work to get there because I feel like we're a very flashy business where yeah we post like the big things, right? Like we don't always post the other stuff and that can be detrimental to a lot of authors, particularly the authors or particularly the the posts that show an author coming right out of the gate swinging, right? Like huge auctions, six figures, this big yeah. splashy deal gets a film, all of that, right? Cause those happen, those kinds of success stories happen. They're not totally uncommon. But I think that people look to that and expect that. And I don't feel like that's the norm that authors can expect. So we hear a lot about the authors breaking out in that six-figure deal way. But more often than not, people are starting with one book deal with, you know, probably not, compar comparatively, they're a smaller advance, right? Like maybe within four to five figures, right? Not yeah. every author is going to launch in that huge way. And that's okay. I would say the majority of authors are getting probably maybe five figure book deals, but it could even be a multi book deal to get to that five figures. So it could be three, four figure book deals, three $5,000 book deals, let's say. And I, I think that that's important to know that that is the reality of those first time authors. And it also does depend on your age group and your your format and your genre. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, that's where we're selling, which is why agents have more than one client. Like if everybody had a Lee Bardugo on their list, we'd have one client. I would be- We would have like, one client. <laughs> and we'd be living in Bali. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like you would not see me on this here YouTube. I would just be relaxing somewhere, kicking my feet up, managing one or two- You wouldn't even know my name. Because right. there'd be no reason for any other author to know my name. Right. But I think, I think, so I think it's important to realize that your career, most careers will start off slow and steady. And I think mm -hmm. the ones that last are doing so because they've had so many books under their belt that are selling really well, right? Like it is a slower buildup, but that's our job too. Like our job is to help build that for you. And it looks different for everybody. You know, I was, it's funny that we're having this conversation right now because just this week I was listening to a podcast where Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who is a treasure, by the way, right. was interviewing Isabel Allende. And does everybody here know that Isabel Allende didn't even, I believe, start writing her first book till she was 40? So that is an important thing to know and hold on to. Like, you don't have to start this when you're 21. Anyway, they were having a conversation about writing books and building a career. And, and actually, it wasn't even just writing books. It was creativity, right? It was acting or writing or painting. It was any of these creative pursuits that artists, and I think all of that group are artists, have. And both of them agreed. And I'm going to butcher this a little, so bear with me and go listen to the podcast yourself. But... <laughs> 
both of them basically said writing the book or doing the craft should be about the pursuit of the craft. It should never be about the making of the money because that may or may not come. Um, but the other part of this was that this is another podcast. I'm all over the place with my podcast. Um, <laughs> was that real success comes from quantity. So the authors have real success the more they do. So if you're an author who has been editing the same book for two years, that road to success isn't going to get you there as fast as the author who is making $5,000 a book, but writing two to three books a year. And those authors are some of our most successful authors at bookends. And you're going to look at that and go, but they didn't get the six figure deal. How can they be successful? Because over time, it all builds on each other. Yeah. Well, I say that about us too, right? Like we have to have books to sell books. We can't sell a book if we don't have clients. Right. And I think it, it works to apply that to an author. The more books you sell, the more royalties you can get right? Mm -hmm. So you're publishing a book a year. That's a really steady pace for your readers and you're not cannibalizing your own sales in the marketplace. That's a really steady pace for you to continue churning out books. Maybe not necessarily for six figures a book, but you have one of those coming out every year. You have earnings, you're getting publicity every year, you're getting promotional events, things like that. You are building a career. You're maybe not coming out of the gates at the very top, but you're, go you're getting there. Well, and the truth is a six-figure deal doesn't mean you came out at the very top and it doesn't right. mean your career continues. So, you know, you could have a six-figure career and not turn in another book for five years, or you could be writing books and earning that six figures over five years and end up with 25 books, maybe not 25, maybe 20, maybe 15 books. But over time, those 15 books are building off each other and they're going to make you a lot more than six figures readers forget so and and we'll see this with authors who quit writing you know we have authors who were really successful but once they stop writing the royalties drop and drop and drop and drop because every book brings you new readers every book brings your readers back to your other books go on can i flip that too yeah because look at colleen hoover right? Like arguably the biggest name in a bookstore right now. Yeah. She had so many books before. Yeah. I, I, what was it? It starts with us or ends with us. The pink cover. I can see yeah. it. That That's what I always up, say. The pink cover. <laughs> yeah. That one blew up on TikTok. And then look at her. What? Maybe within a year, all of those books were on the New York times bestseller list. Yeah. She had like nine books on the bestseller list at one point, but when she was not as big as she was, not as huge as she was getting these big splashy deals on the New York Times bestsellers. She was writing. She was Just publishing writing. those books. And you got to respect her hustle because she was publishing those books. She was promoting them. She was doing her thing. And then they blew up. And you can't control that. I'm not saying every author is going to have that moment where they blow up on TikTok. But she was someone who was doing the work. And those books that she was putting out, maybe not for $100,000, $200,000, million dollar deals, she was putting them out and they came back and rewarded her in kind when that one book maybe did go where she went or she built that readership that blew her up. You know, like I think it happens both ways. Yes. And the words you said right there that really need to be repeated are she can't control that. Yeah. So the only thing any author can control are their books. The only thing you can control is the brand you're building by what you're writing. So that as you're writing and growing, you just keep putting those books out and or writing those books and submitting those books and querying those books. The author who sends me a query and says, I queried this book to you three years ago, but I've revamped it. Here it is, is not going to have the same success as the author who has sent me four books in those three years and keeps getting better with each book. Because I know when they finally start to get published, they're just going to keep writing the books rather than the person who's been stuck in the same world for three years. And querying is a numbers game too. Like almost every step of the way is a numbers game. Such a numbers game. And it's for a numbers game for us too. Sure. You know, but yes, I mean, you've got to keep querying. The other thing I've been thinking a lot about with this is 
and I, I need to have a conversation with some of my clients about this. Um, but once you're agented and your book goes on submission, the first thing you should do is not sit there and worry about who your agent is submitting to and people are say saying. You should be having a conversation with your agent about what you're working on now. And to be honest, if that book isn't selling, which a lot of books don't, just because your agent doesn't guarantee a sale. Oh, sure. When that next book is done that you and your agent have discussed and they're excited about, you should say, I would like to have that book before I call you and tell you I have nowhere le else left to submit your book to. I would like to have that next book in my hand so I can go, this is amazing. And we can plan your career in kind too, right? Like if you have that next book and you're like, this is so much better than what we're shopping right now. It's like, maybe we should pivot. Yes. So it's good to have yes. those and conversations then, to be proactive. And that gives you as the author and me as your agent, more agency, more control, yeah. right? We're not just sitting around waiting to hear from editors. We're going to go hit them with the next thing. And then you're going to be writing your third book. And then if for some reason the second book doesn't sell, we don't care at that point because we've got a new book we're ready to send out. Or right. even better, if that second book sells, now we can sell two books because you're almost done with that third book. Yeah, and we know how to brand you and we know what to say is your option. Like we have, we're seeing a few steps forward, which is great. Yeah. But you cannot do that if your eyes are always on someone else's paper. So it's oh, super important to so keep true. your eyes on your, your own paper. Like keep your, <laughs> we were told that in fifth grade during spelling tests, like you have <laughs> to look at your own journey, your own stuff. You can support someone. I always say, I will clap for anyone, right? Like if you deserve it, I will clap for you, but it does not affect me. And it does not affect who I'm submitting for my clients or my own writing. It doesn't affect that. Like it's not taking away from me. Publishing is not a big piece of pie. It is not taking away from me. If my book has a place in the market, it will find its place in the market through my own sort of focus and determination. And I think all of the things that you can do to better your career are going to be within you and not, you know, not what someone else is doing and, and capitalizing off of that. And actually to that point, there are times when people are looking at their critique group partners or their best friends or whatever, but most of the time, the people we're comparing ourselves to are not people we know that intimately and we don't know their journey. Yeah. You know, we don't know. So, you know, in my example of you send me that next book while I'm submitting that first book and I'm ready to go with it. <clears throat> Keep in mind, that works better when you're writing a 400 page manuscript than if you're writing a two page uh, picture book manuscript where you can submit, you know, you don't want to overwhelm your agent either. Yeah, but um, my point being, you don't know the journey. I have plenty of authors who people just, you know, this is amazing. This is incredible. Blah, 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 blah. They don't know that we spent 18 months getting to that point with the book before we could even submit it. We don't, they don't know that I turned down four pitches from that client before I could even give them the go ahead to write the book. So you can- Or that maybe they were on submission for a year or the editor <laughs> or longer. off to another editor. Like there are so- many nuances that you'll never know it's not part of the story ever no no and some of it is seemingly unimportant right it's not part of the story the author will share because they don't think it was important but it it's not your story so yeah. it is important when you're trying to compare you can't yeah every career is a series of choices and they have to be made with you with your agent they have to be made in full like knowing of what you're doing. And those choices are always going to be different because everybody's career is different. Your your day job, your family life, your all of it plays a part in your writing career and everybody's is going to be different. Yeah, and I think before you decide that I'm going to be a writer so I can quit my day job, decide on the steps of the journey that you're hoping to get you there so you can enjoy it. You're not likely, and even if you get the six-figure deal, to be honest, you get that first deal and it's six figures i don't know that i'd recommend quitting your day job oh no we have a video on that please go watch it <laughs> yeah because that six figures is going to take longer than a year or two well it's also not six figures you know right. like if you get a hundred thousand dollar deal take away 15 percent for your agent take away like 30 ish percent for taxes split that over the course of two books over the course of all of these different payment triggers 
you're getting a very little money at one point, right? Yeah. Like maybe you're getting <laughs> like eight to 10,000 on signing, eight to 10,000 on delivery, eight to 10,000 on pub. But I mean, that's not enough to quit my job. No, and I, and I think we need to stop looking at it as it should, because I think of, I think it is more comparable, like I said, to other arts. How many actors can you think of that you see every day in a TV commercial or something like that who haven't likely quit their day job? And they're going on hundreds of auditions. Yes. So I think we have to compare it to something more like that. And you have to have a passion for the writing. And hopefully it becomes lucrative and hopefully we can all quit our day jobs. But for now, I think the reality is baby steps to get there, maybe. Yeah. And I think keeping that in con like keeping that context will help everybody be a little more successful because realism will take you a long way in publishing. Yeah. And keep writing books, lots and lots of books. Right. Okay. Well, we hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We post videos every Wednesday and we hope to see you back here next time.